Good morning. Welcome to Hilltop. Good, morning. Good to see you guys. Uh, it's all about Jesus, period. Yeah. Uh, my name is David, and I am glad you are attending here today. It's good to have you. Thank you for attending on our broadcast, uh, joining us today. Thank you for attending out on the patio. You out there? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I hear you guys out there. All right, awesome, man. Uh, thank you for attending and driving or listening out there. Thank you for joining us. And okay, you got some pressure on you guys now, right? So thank you for in, uh, joining us, attending in here this morning. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's what I like to have. Hoo hoo, I got a hoo hoo. Arsenio Hall fan, I don't know. Yeah, it's a blast of the past there. What's going on? So, uh, hey, uh, it's exciting to be here. Yes, uh, we love Jesus. If you're here, your guest today, welcome. We're glad you're joining us. We love Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We believe he is the key to life. And uh, we don't want to hide that from you. We want you to know that right up front. We are going to push Jesus Christ. We're going to encourage you to give him your life. There's lots of people in here. Uh, we talked at men's breakfast yesterday. So, gentlemen, if someone could come talk to you about Jesus Christ, just slide your hand up real quick there. There you go. Okay. So there you see these hands. So if you want to go talk to someone other than me, because I know I'm so scary. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm way uglier up front. I look beautiful from a distance, but so the, the broadcast people have the best view of me. But uh, anyways, maybe the driving people have the best view of me. Uh, but anyways, if you want to talk to someone about Jesus Christ, those guys who raise their hand, uh, feel free to go talk to them. If you want to talk, there are some ladies out here, uh, feel free to talk to them. There are people, we love Jesus Christ, and we want you to love Jesus too. That's why we say it's all about Jesus, period. Uh, we believe in him. So, hey, uh, back when I was in college, I had to take a marketing class. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, uh, A it was college and B it was marketing. So, huh. uh, in this class, we had this guy who fancied himself as the idea guy. That's how he said it. I'm just the idea guy. And I always wondered, what is the idea guy, right? And he'd say, oh, well, it's my job to come up with the ideas. And he, he was always spouting off these crazy ideas in college class. Uh, you know, he'd go, oh, I got a great commercial. Here's how the commercial should be. Here's how you should sell this product. And people would go, okay, great. How are you going to do that? And he'd go, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm just the idea guy. And I said, what? What do you mean you're just the idea guy? I'm just the guy who comes up with the ideas. It's not my job to sell it. It's not my job to make it. It's just my, I'm just, I'm just the guy who comes up with the idea. And I said, so do you think someone's going to just hire you and pay you to be the idea guy? He said, well, of course. I thought, oh, okay, great. You know, so you think someone's just going to take you off the street with no experience whatsoever and pay you to sit in a room and be the idea guy? Yeah, maybe if you've been around 40 years, maybe you can be the idea guy, but when you're first starting off, I'm not sure if that would work. Uh, I haven't seen the guy in years. I wonder if he still comes up with good ideas while he's standing in the unemployment line. I'm just curious. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a biased opinion. Who knows? Maybe he is the idea guy somewhere, and maybe I should have learned something from him. Maybe. Uh, many people have this idea of what a leader is, what a leader is, and how to be a leader. And we have ideas. And the idea is, well, a leader clearly is just someone who tells everybody else what to do, and they don't do anything themselves. I love that idea. Yeah, I haven't experienced that yet, right? The idea person. I just come up with ideas and I tell everybody, go do this, go do that, uh, go do whatever, and then come back and report to me. And I'm just here in my office with my feet up, getting my shoulders rubbed, eating bonbons. I don't know what those are even, but eating those and just living the life, right? Uh, because that's what a leader does. I haven't found that job. I need to quit this church and go to another church, apparently. If I, that's, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. Yeah, a, I love you guys too much. You'd cut me down and kill me. So uh, maybe some of you would celebrate. Woo! All right. We like that idea, Pastor. Uh, we're in this series where Jesus begins to throw that whole idea out of what a leader is, an idea guy. And we're in this series called Campfire Stories. Say that with me. Campfire Stories. 
It's really two words. I like to make it three words. Uh, you know, campfire stories. And we're looking at the stories that Jesus told, the parables that Jesus told throughout uh, the Gospels. And we're digging in how they apply to our lives. And today's parable between the wise and the foolish servant applies perfectly to this concept of what leadership is. The wise and the foolish servant. The question then becomes, which one are we? Are we the wise or are we the foolish? Remember last week we talked about there's no gray area? It's really no gray area in this one either. Jesus says you're either wise or you're foolish. You're not kind of in between. You fence sitters who like to sit there, right? You can't be. It's wise or you're foolish. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. If you do not have a Bible... There's one likely in chair in front of you or in front of you next to you or over a little bit. If you need that, you can have that Bible. Take it home with you. If you're on the broadcast joining us, we can get you a Bible. If you're out on the patio, uh, Jerry or Pat out there could get you a Bible. Uh, we'll get you one. We want you to have a Bible. So take that home with you. Uh, it's a free gift. It's a free gift. So take it. Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 45. Jesus is talking and Jesus says this, a faithful sensible, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of man, uh, managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. Awesome, right? I tell you the truth. The master will have, but the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. Okay, that's good news. Verse 48, but what if the servant is evil? Uh-oh. And he thinks my master won't be back for a while. And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected. And he will cut, this is kind of violent. He will cut the servant into pieces chop, 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 and assign him a place with the hypocrites, oh boy, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So now, how many of you have older siblings? You got older siblings? Okay. So how many of you are, are the older sibling? Okay, losers, put your hands down. All right, that's all right. Just, just, you're outnumbered here. You're outnumbered. So uh, this kind of sounds like when mom and dad leave home and they put the older sibling in charge, right? Now, those of us who are younger, the cooler, younger siblings, uh, you know, under the abusive oppression of the older sibling, um, you know, the, the older abusive, it depends what kind of servant our sibling is. Are they kind and caring and are they concerned that mom and dad are going to come home and that little ones are going to whine and squeal and say everything that happened, right? Or do they just go out and party and, and they beat us and they're ruthless and they lock us in our room and they give us wedgies and they put our heads in the toilet? So I'm regressing. Anyway, so uh, not that any of this may or may not have happened, but and it's, and it's kind of like this, right? And Jesus is talking about this leadership, but he puts in this very graphic, very brutal. He didn't just say, if dad comes home and finds you misbehaving, or the master comes home and finds you misbehaving, he's going to like fire you, or he's going to spank you. No, he said he's going to cut you into pieces. Wow. That's what, what serial killers do. Right? I mean, like, that's pretty graphic. I mean, he's making a pretty clear distinction between what's going to happen between the wise and the foolish servant. Sorry, not that you guys are wise and you guys are foolish. So the wise and the foolish servant. I'm equal there, right? Uh, he's making a pretty clear distinction. Jesus is describing for us the difference between being a good leader and a idea leader or a foolish leader. See, a good leader is humble. A good leader is humble. Say humble. Humble, right? Nobody likes saying that word. Humble. Anyway, a good leader is humble. Jesus calls a good leader a faithful, sensible servant. A faithful, sensible servant. That's what Jesus says. Humility, let me just be right up front. Humility is the greatest attribute that at Hilltop we are looking for in a leader. 
humility. So if you want to be a leader at Hilltop, we're looking for humility. That's what we're looking for. Someone who is humble. If you're not humble, I'm sure there's somewhere else for you. You know, you think you deserve it anyway, so I mean, all right, right? But the rest of us, you know, humility. I don't know. Humility. Jesus was humble. We say at Hilltop, it's all about Jesus, period. Well, if it's all about Jesus, period, then we're supposed to be like Jesus. We're supposed to model Jesus. We're supposed to follow Jesus' footsteps. And if Jesus was humble, therefore we should be humble. Look at your neighbor and tell him how humble you are. <laughs> ah, that was a test. You just broke it. So, yeah, it's a test. Tricked you there, huh? Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. It says this, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king, let's talk about Jesus, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble. He is humble. It's all about Jesus, period. We're supposed to be humble. Riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Now, in ancient times, when the king, when the hero arrived into the city, he would come riding on a strong war horse a powerful, a big horse. Uh, he would show his might. He would show his strength because he's trying to tell the city, I am your king. I'm dominant. I'm mighty. Don't mess with me. Look how strong I am. I've conquered you or I rule over you. But that's not how Jesus comes. Jesus comes in a vastly different way. He comes riding on a donkey, on a colt. This is a sign of peace. It's a sign of humility. Now think about it, because Jesus could have come riding on the wings of angels. Jesus could have said, I'm the King of Kings. I'm the Lord of Lords. I'm here. I'm in my city, Jerusalem, and I'm going to enter it with majestic glory on the shoulders of my angels. Woo and we all would be, holy crap, that guy's in charge, right? <laughs> Do what he says. He didn't come that way. He came in humility because Jesus isn't worried about showing how powerful he is. He isn't worried about his name, and he isn't worried about, oh, we, we, we have to worship him. All those things should happen, but Jesus isn't worried about that. Jesus is coming for us. Jesus is saying, I'm coming humbly because I want the people to know that I come in peace. And I humbly come before them so that it will draw them to me because they don't even know how bad they need me. He comes in a very different way. Humility, it's a powerful thing. It draws us towards Christ. Ego pushes us away from Christ. We can all think of a believer who were like, that's a believer in Jesus? <laughs> I don't want to follow the Jesus that person's following. Humility I want to know the Jesus that person's following. It changes everything. If we're going to be a leader at Hilltop, we have to be full of humility. We have to be full of humility. Uh, humility doesn't mean that we think less of ourselves. So you don't have to go home and beat yourself up. Humility just means that you think of others more. So you may have talent. You may have ability. You may have qualities. You may, you may look in the mirror and go, you are one good looking dude. I don't know. If you're a woman, I guess you say, you're one beautiful woman. <laughs> you do it with the hair dryer. So the wind's blowing already. You are sexy, mama. I don't know what you ladies do. I don't know what's going on with you guys. Just, I only know what us guys do. What are these cracks in my skin? I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's thinking of yourself less. Thinking of yourself less. Jesus was thinking of himself less. He was thinking of other people by coming on a donkey. He, he, he wasn't worried about his own ego, his own greatness. He was thinking about people. Uh, I've been around a, a lot of leaders. Uh, I've been in the ministry game a long time, uh, all the way back to when I was a wee little lad. Now I'm an old fart. Not as much as some of you, but anyways, but uh, I'm getting up there. So, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> I've been in leadership a long time. I've been in the church world a long time, serving 
along a lot of people. And what I've noticed is there's a lot of people who either want to be a leader and do nothing. I want to be a leader and do nothing. Or I want to do nothing but get all the credit. I found a lot of those. I want to be in charge but do nothing. Just tell everybody else what to do. Or I want all the credit but do nothing for it. Uh, this is a very common thing. If you've been in church a long time, it's, very com- it's there. It's there, right? And Jesus is telling us, wait, that's the wrong attitude. That's an ego-driven attitude. Jesus even tells us in the campfire story what he's looking for. The verse said, Jesus is looking for people who he can give the responsibility of managing. What are we managing? Ourselves? Telling people what to do? No, we're managing other household servants, other people, and we're feeding them. Okay. My brother Ted was listening right now. His job was to take care of me and to feed me, not to beat me and lock me in a room. That's right. I'm painting a bad picture of him. It wasn't all that bad. I I love you, Ted. Anyways, right? Notice here that it's about people. That's what Jesus just said. It's about people. It's about the other household servants, and it's about feeding them. If we're going to be a leader, we have to humble ourselves and say, it's not about what I get. It's not about the recognition I get. It's not about the glory I get. First of all, it's about Jesus Christ, period. But then it's about helping other people discover Jesus Christ. I don't come to church and serve so that people pat me on the back and thank me and say, what a great job you've done. No, we come to church so other people will hear about Jesus Christ. And sometimes you go home tired and you're exhausted and you're like, man, that was a long day. My feet are killing me. My throat's sore. I don't know. I had to hug people. It's horrible, right? But we do all that so that others discover Jesus Christ. Because I want to model Jesus for you. And I'm here to say it's all about Jesus, period. It's not about what I get. It's not about you patting me on the back. It's not about you saying, oh, good job. I care less about that. What I care is you walking out saying, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Praise him. Thank you. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's Jesus. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I'm getting clapped today. I'm, we're doing all right. I'll, Let's get back to insulting everybody. Yeah, that's all right. So. <laughs> Here's the thing about church. Church, we're in this thing together. We are a family, so we're in it together. It takes all of us. If I just succeed or if one of us just succeeds, then we're really not succeeding at all. We can't individually succeed and be successful. Success is when all of us together succeed. That's unity because we're one family, one church under Jesus Christ because he is our Lord and Savior. He is in charge. The rest of us all fall underneath him and just say, to your glory, to your honor, Jesus, I praise your holy name. It's all about Jesus, period. I went too fast. It's all about Jesus, period. period. Matthew 24, verse 46. Jesus says, if the master returns and finds that the servants have done a good job, there will be a reward. Ooh, I like rewards. It's like the cereal box. You need to keep pouring until you get that little toy inside. You remember those days? Some of you still have grandchildren, or, you know, they pick out cereal based on the prize that's in it, not what they like to eat, right? Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want, Dad. And I'm like, okay, but I'm getting it first. Anyway, so uh, there'll be a reward, right? A good leader is hungry. Say hungry. 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 A good leader is hungry. They want to eat, right? A good leader is someone who's hungry to please their master, In the text, who's our master? Jesus Christ. Are we hungry to please Jesus? Are we like, Lord, you've left me here. You left me in charge. But one day you're going to come back. And when you come back, I want you to find me hard at work, praising your name, humbly serving other people, telling others about Jesus Christ. Are you going to find me doing that? Or are you going to find me beating people, partying, looking for my own self-interest? 
we're going to be a great leader for Jesus Christ, we've got, to people who, we've got to be people who are hungry to pursue Jesus' glory. People who are actively saying, I want my pastor to come back and be proud of me when he returns. Wow, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm pleased with you. I'm proud of you. That's what we're looking for in leadership, right? Not just an idea person. Someone who's passionate about Christ. Uh, people are, you know, people are interesting. Not everybody's really hungry. It's not really hungry. Notice Jesus says, here's what happens. If you're hungry for me, you're going to be about my business. You're going to be serving. But if you're not hungry for me, you're going to be about partying and serving. Notice, notice both of those parties listen to what Jesus said. They heard what the master said but they responded differently. We could argue that they both were hungry, but one was hungry to please Jesus and one was hungry to please self. Those are two vastly different roads. I had a person in Hilltop come to me uh, a while back, a few years ago, and they said, uh, hey, Dave, I want to be a leader at Hilltop. I said, great, we're desperate. Yeah, just kidding. But uh, great, you want to be a leader? I'm excited. I get excited when people want to step up. Hey, I want to serve Jesus Christ. All right, awesome. I said, well, here's what we'll do. We'll give you this title, and you know, then people will know you're in charge. Whoa, whoa. I don't want a title. I said, well, why not? Well, then people will expect me to lead. I said, isn't that what you're asking to do? Oh, okay, all right. I said, well, I'll tell you what. We'll give you a credit card, and we'll give you some authority to spend some money so you can purchase stuff. And he, They said, whoa, whoa. I don't want that kind of responsibility. I mean, now I have to like track budgets and stuff like that. I'm not sure I want to do that, David. I said, okay. He said, well, how about we put you in charge of a connection group? You can been sharing scripture and attracting people and inviting them to a connection group, talk about Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I don't, I don't really want to do that. I mean, what if someone asked me some unanswerable question? I said, well, if it's unanswerable, don't answer it. All right, I mean, let's just... It's an unanswerable question, right? It's an easy one. I don't really want that kind of, that's too much pressure. I said, so let me get this straight. You want to be a leader, but you don't want to do anything. Well, no, I want to tell everybody else what to do. <laughs> okay. They weren't around at Hilltop very long, right? They weren't around. Because, you know, our first MO is, oh, you want to be a leader? Great, here's a plunger. The toilet's broke. Go fix it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's not the kind of leader I want to be. I want to tell people about Jesus Christ. You can while you're plunging. <laughs> Jesus will clean the crud out of your life too. <laughs> you can trust him, man. Trust him, yeah. It's a lot of spiritual development that happens there, right? It happens, right? <laughs> a hungry person is hungry to please our master, Jesus Christ. I'm hungry to please Jesus you don't like it, but I don't get up here to preach to please you guys. I get up here to preach Jesus Christ. And if none of you showed up, I would still get up here and preach. And I've done it before. Nobody showed up. It was just my wife and my three kids at the time. Well, I said, what are we going to do? I said, sit down in the front row. Maybe one of you will accept the Lord today, right? <laughs> going at it. That's, uh, going at it. So, so They didn't, so it must have not been that good. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, See, someone who's hungry is willing to work for Christ without credit. They're willing to work long hours. They're willing to go home with tired feet. They're willing to go, man, this is consuming some of my time. I mean, I work a full-time job, and I got to come to church and hilltop, and wow, I'm tired, and oh, you know, maybe dinner's not as good. Hopefully, my husband or my wife is a good cook, and they'll have it ready when I get home. I don't know. Maybe my children will rise up and do a miracle and make dinner. Who knows, right? And we're looking for people who are, who are hungry, and why do we do it? Not because we're getting something out of it, but because other people are getting something out of it. And we're hungry to see people believe and give their lives to Jesus Christ. Because he's awesome. Because he's transformed our lives. We're passionate about him. That's, that's what we're looking for at Hilltop. People are hungry and passionate. And it's not about, let me tell you all my ideas. It's about, hey, I got a great idea. Awesome. What are you going to do with that idea? Well, here's the thing, Pastor. You don't have to do anything. Because I'm going to take care of the idea. 
I'm going to come up with organizing the idea. I'm going to advertise the idea. I'm going to go and talk to people and tell them about the idea. I'm going to draw them to the idea. And then I'm going to show up early and set up for the idea. And then I'm going to praise and, and glorify Jesus' name at the idea. And then when everybody goes home, I'm going to stay late and I'm going to clean up after the idea. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to put on Facebook how awesome Jesus was about the idea. Not how great I was about the idea, how awesome Jesus was about the idea. That's people who are hungry to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. And we humble ourselves in that and say, it's not about me. It's all about Jesus, period. See, according to Jesus' campfire story, we can either work for the benefit of people or we can work for the benefit of ourselves. Jesus has gifted us with brains. He's gifted us with talent. He's gifted us with ability. And we can use that for Jesus' glory or we can use that for our own glory. I can make a whole lot of money and get another job and really get a big pile of cash and have all this stuff for myself or I can serve Jesus Christ and let him take care of that. Or I can seek my own glory and pray so people love me, and I can do a YouTube channel and, you know, do all this. I probably can't do a YouTube channel, but anyway, so I do all that stuff, and people will praise me, or I can seek praise for Jesus Christ. The wise and the foolish. The wise and the foolish. A good leader is a smart leader. They're smart. Say smart. 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 Proverbs, I I, I love that Zach read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, because we're going to read Proverbs 3, 3, and 4. Most of us never read that verse. It says, never let loyalty and kindness leave us. Tie them around our neck as a reminder. Write them deep within our heart. Then we will find favor with both God and people. And we will earn a good reputation. Now, when I talk about smarts, I'm not talking about IQ. So those of us who struggle in school, guilty, uh, we don't have to be intelligent that way. What we're talking about with smarts is people who understand people and relationships. That's what we're talking about. People who are smart are people who recognize when they walk into a group, okay, there's a group of people here, and they're different than I am. And how am I going to interact with them? And smart people are smart enough to go, there's some things I can't say and some things I shouldn't say. Now, I say a lot of stuff here in the stage. Most of you can't get away with what I say. Can't get away with insulting your wife and, you know, doing all that stuff. I don't recommend that. Smart people understand that. I get a little leverage here. So, you know, that's just, yeah. But we understand that. We understand maybe there's certain subjects I shouldn't talk about. Maybe there's certain subjects I should talk about. We understand, hey, this person is hurting, and maybe they need Jesus Christ. And we're smart enough to say, you know what? I don't just have to come and say, here's the Bible. Love Jesus, or you're going to hell. Maybe that's not the smartest way to do it. Maybe I need to come at them and say, hey, let me give you a hug. Jesus loves you. And we're smart enough to understand and read people. This is what we're talking about. Smart IQ intelligence. Not not brains, but people. We're smart enough to understand, hey, we don't stand back and just go, gee, I hope someone comes and talks to me today. No, we're smart enough to go, I'm going to approach someone else and say, hey, good morning. Good to have you today. Hey, what have you been reading in your Bible? Oh, nothing? Nothing? I'll read with you. Would you like to read together? See, we're smart enough to understand what's going on. We're smart enough to understand that it's about Jesus Christ. We're smart enough to understand that people are dying and going to hell. And there's Havasu full of people. We got some great churches in Havasu, but there's still plenty of people who are lost. And we got to be smart enough to reach after them. We don't have to fight with other churches. Let the churches do what they do. Praise God. Let them reach the people they're reaching. We don't need to pursue those people. They're already going to heaven. We need to pursue all the other people in Havasu, in Arizona, around the world for Jesus Christ. And we're smart enough to understand that. We don't, gotta, we don't have to get in stupid little arguments with other church people. Praise God, you do it differently. God bless you. Go do it. We're going to pursue people who aren't going to church and look for them. And we're smart enough to understand that, that they need Christ. A smart leader, right? Jesus is looking for people who are humble, 
who are hungry, who are smart. Hilltop is looking for people to be leaders who are humble, hungry, and smart. Humble before Jesus, hungry to serve Jesus, and smart to know that Jesus loves people, and that's why he came. Bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, Lord. We thank you for humbly coming for us. And Jesus, we didn't even know we needed you. But you humbled yourself and you came and you were smart enough to understand that we needed saving from ourselves and our sin. And you were hungry enough to come and be about your father's business to die on the cross. Let's get it done. Let's die on the cross, let's suffer, let's die so that these people can believe and have eternal life. Thank you for that, Jesus. And may we be those kind of leaders who rise up in Hilltop to be passionate to leave Hilltop and share your good news with this community. To reach out and tell people that there's a church that loves them. We want you to come here and we're going to love on you. And we're going to walk beside you and we're going to accept you your scars and your wounds and all that you have. And we're going to share Jesus with you because it is all about Jesus, period. Thank you, Jesus, for that blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Now, let me talk to you for a second about Jesus Christ. So uh, you may not know Jesus. You may have been coming to Hilltop for a while. Maybe you're on the broadcast uh, joining us for a while, and you have not given yourself to Jesus Christ, let me just be plain. Jesus came and he died on the cross and he shed his blood. He did that because of our sins. And he did it to forgive us of our sins. So whatever you've gone through in life, whatever baggage you're holding the sins, Jesus loves you and he forgives you. And the cool part is if that's where it stopped, that'd be awesome. But it didn't stop there. Jesus died he was buried. Three days later, he came back to life, and he's alive today. There's plenty enough people who saw him and testified to that. And so the reality is, if we'll choose to give our life to Jesus Christ and believe in him, ask him to forgive us of our sins, he will forgive us, and his spirit will enter us, and we will become his child and live with him forever. And then we start the journey of becoming like him. And that's a pretty cool journey to be on. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, I encourage you on your connection card there. Uh, there's a box on the bottom left. Check that. Uh, I will send you some information. You can come talk to me. Uh, in fact, anybody in here, if they can come talk to you, raise your hand. There you go. Here's people that you can come talk to about Jesus Christ. They'll be happy to share him with you. But we don't want you to leave here without knowing him. So I encourage you, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. We have a book at the, the blue tablecloth out there that explains all of this. Ask Jerry and Pat out there for that booklet. It's free. It's a small little booklet. It's not a novel. You can read it in the bathroom. Uh, but go through that. And we'll be happy to try to answer any questions for you, all right? In a second here, we're going to take communion. So uh, if you would like to take communion with us and you did not get a cup today, there's some back there. You can raise your hand and uh, Diana will bring you one. There's one up here, Diana. Uh, two up here. So uh, we'll, we'll get you a cup. And communion is really a, a great time. It's, it's a chance to celebrate what Jesus Christ did for us. But also it applies perfectly to what I talked about today. Because Jesus was the ultimate humble, hungry, and smart person. Humble enough to leave his kingdom and come down to earth for us. And really, sometimes I wonder why he did that. But he loves us so much I can't define that love. And he was hungry enough to say, I will go to the cross even though I don't want to. I'm going to do it because my father needs me and because these people need it. And he was, he was smart enough to say, these people need a savior. And that's what we're celebrating when we take communion. It's what we're doing. So I encourage you to take it with us. Father God, we just thank you for blessing us, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for shedding your blood. And we're here today, and we're going to take communion to celebrate you, Jesus. And it's also a proclamation of Jesus. I choose to give you my life and live for you. I want you to be my Lord because I recognize my sin, and I recognize what you've done for me. Jesus, thank you 
thank you, Lord, for what you did. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.